Okay, Dick, welcome to the summit. Um, so I've just finished reading your, your most recent book, No Bad Parts. And I'm just curious, you know, how has IFS changed you as a person over the years? You know, how has it changed your experience of life? I uh, came out of my family, as you read, with uh, not only a lot of aggression, a lot of anger, particularly at my father, but also um, a sense of worthlessness and and uh, kind of hopelessness and or anxiety. And went away to college and uh, played football, which at my size was a stretch because I think we figured out at the time I was the smallest uh, starter in the the league and possibly in the country. I was about five, 740 pounds. So that's very small in American football. And the reason I could survive was I just would let this angry part totally take over. And, and so it was useful on the football field, but it wasn't so useful in relationships. And as a leader, which I later became. Um, so yeah, between the angry part and then to counter the feeling of worthlessness that I'd gotten from my father, uh, I had a, a part that really wanted to prove him wrong and to, to do something important. And then of course I had parts that never thought I could ever do anything. So I had all those polarizations going and the good news about it is that that striving part drove me to create this model, stand up to all the attacks and, and uh, the, the disinterest kept me, kept me persistent through it all. And then at some point I found that I, I had a following and I was a leader and that striving part, the, the need for accolades, the need for attention really was getting in the way as was my angry part. And I started to uh, get the message that if this was going to actually work out, I had to do a lot of work on myself and to lead from a different place. And, you know, by then I, I knew about self, but I still was quite blended with those protectors. And so I did a, uh, I traded sessions with somebody who was able to help me uh, really unburden the worthlessness was the main thing. And uh, yeah, so that was a big change. And, and then I, my first wife was really good at triggering me and, and my second wife is too. And so that also really helped because I, I would get triggered, I would get angry, but then I would follow the anger as a trailhead to find the parts that it was protecting, which were a little different than the worthlessness it was more uh, parts that were stuck in the past where I was being uh, hurt and shamed and, uh, and not just from my father, but also felt very cut off and distant from my mother. And so long story short, I wound up doing a lot of work on myself and uh, I think now, like you said, it's very hard to, for people to find that or trigger that angry part. It's just not angry anymore most of the time. And although my my current wife can do it once in a while, uh, and uh, I really don't need the accolades anymore. That's that's been a really big difference. Um, I I pursue the model and I keep working at it from a very different place than before. And, uh, and I think that's partly why it's become so successful is people can sense the authenticity and the, the they, they sense the self leadership in me, whereas before they would have sensed a lot more, the striving part, and sometimes the insecure part. Sometimes the angry part would jump in and make me defensive. So that's 
that's a short version. <laughs> Very cool. Two things come to mind there. The first is that it's amazing what you can achieve when you don't care who gets the credit, you know, and whenever you, I see you, you going about your IFS work, it's not about Dick Schwartz. It's about, it's about the work itself. And I think that's really refreshing to see. And then the other thing you said about, you know, your wife can has the potential to trigger you. Um, it reminds me, we interviewed Terry real for the summit who I think you've had dialogue with before. And he, he says, relationships are the ultimate form of spiritual practice. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's so true, you know, um, so the next thing I'd like to ask you about Dick is your motivation for writing your latest book, no bad parts and something else, which I find interesting too, was, you know, whenever someone sees someone like yourself doing what you do, they don't understand that you also have internal battles, internal struggles and self doubt about, about these, pro these big projects that you take on. So I'm just curious about how you overcame or how you overcome and continue, continue to do so um, self-doubt and how maybe the IFS model can even help with that? Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't have a lot of self-doubt anymore, but I, I certainly did. And uh, all along, I had parts that thought I could never do anything like this. And, you know, when I stumbled onto this back in the early 80s, I thought, wow, this is quite amazing. I hope the person comes along who can take it where it's supposed to go, because I'm an idiot. <laughs> and I'm still waiting for that person. But, uh, you know, I, I, those are other parts I had to work with, the parts that didn't think I had much to contribute and thought of myself still as an as a adolescent most of the time. Um, and, yeah, so... So that, again, was a lot of unburdening, a lot of finding the parts and helping them get to know me, se separating from them was, you know, I was quite blended with those parts. And so just getting them to, or, or me just seeing them as parts that I needed to help rather than who I really was, was a big shift. And then helping them out of where they were stuck because uh, I was not a good student in school. I I think I had, and I still have a taste of ADHD. And so I was a great frustration to my father and my teachers. And uh, so again, I got a lot of messages about how, you know, how I, a lot of worry people had about how I was going to make it in the world. And so I shared that. And uh, I mean, I, I also felt that about myself. So anyway, uh, it, it took work, but now I, I don't feel real competent in many, many areas, but I do feel really competent in terms of being a therapist and knowing how to navigate in inner systems and, uh, and to be able to be successful as an IFS therapist, particularly with certain populations, that C word confidence is critical. It's really, really important to come to your client with this sort of uh, palpable sense that you know what you're doing and you're really good at this. And that's the challenge for a lot of therapists starting out because you're not really good at it when you start out and clients protectors will sense that. You are saying that the root causes of these problems are actually internal. They're, think, they're things that are happening inside us. And I'm just curious, what do you think those causes are? Um, what are? What are the beliefs we have, the paradigms we have that are causing the problems that currently face humanity? IFS is a very different paradigm than the prevailing one in terms of the conception of the mind and and how it operates and uh, as Robert Percy was saying, most of our attempted solutions are based on that other conception of the mind that if someone is hurting another person, then that person needs to be punished and and uh, exiled from society and 
the message is that so many of our problems are are because we tend to to try to demonize uh, and and uh, lock up each other and instead of listening at first and then actually helping each other heal and so that writ large creates uh, the kinds of governments and cultures that we are faced with now and between that kind of uh, approach and then uh, trauma as was talking about with myself but people in general trauma both traumas that happened in your life to you personal traumas but also what we call legacy burdens the the traumas that happened centuries ago to your ethnic group or your country those traumas produce extreme uh, parts protectors that can dehumanize other people and get very very driven and uh and sort of selfish and and um blinded to the damage that they can do and uh so many of our governments are run by people who are in those parts and they will create more traumas it's just uh, the way it operates for, for anybody who hasn't heard of ifs before dick um i think it's it always helps me to really understand something whenever i know the purpose of it whenever i know the the why behind it so what would you say you know if what would the purpose of ifs is what would you say it is you know the, it's a different purpose at different levels but there are four main goals one is the healing the, of these parts inside of us the releasing them from the extreme roles they're, they're stuck in and helping them transform, liberating them. Mm -hmm. uh, a second goal is to help them come to trust what I call the self as a leader internally so that they can relax more and, and not have to try to be like what I, from family therapy we call parentified children, mm -hmm. which is what most of us are leading our lives these younger parts that think they have to do it for us and then helping the parts harmonize with each other get to know each other and work together and, and then finally and this is the one that uh, i'm trying to bring to larger systems is leading your external life from this place of self from those eight c's both in you know relationships personal relationships but also in terms of uh, how you you lead whatever endeavor you're in the, in the middle of, one of the one of the things you say in the book is that something like this. Anyway, it's like IFS is essentially attachment theory taken inside. In other words, we're creating secure attachment relationships internally. Um, wh how do you think about that, and how would you maybe explain that to somebody? Yeah, I mean, attachment theory has made many wonderful contributions, and a lot of my work is influenced by attachment theory in the sense that the kinds of of pain and terror and shame we we get as kids has this long term effect in our how we are as adults. But attachment theory also made one big mistake that I'm trying to correct. And that was to assume that uh, to have any of the kinds of qualities that I call self, capital S self, inside of us, we had to have gotten them from a relationship, from our having a good parent for a period of time as, as a child, or uh, if you didn't get it there, then from a, a good therapist who almost reparents you or from a, a spouse or it has to come from a relationship from a, another person mm. and as i was doing this work uh and i was finding 
this self in people who had horrible, horrible childhoods. You, you couldn't, uh, it didn't make, attachment theory didn't make sense that it was impossible to find some good attachment figure that they could have gotten these good qualities from. Mm. And so I began to challenge, I was very into attachment theory. I began to say, well, maybe it got this one, this piece wrong. And, and that it's possible to access what I call self in people who've had terrible childhoods. And, uh, and then once you do, then that self can become the good attachment figure because that's what we do. We have, I would have yourself focus on the boy inside who was hurt and hold him and uh, actually take him out of where he's stuck in the past and help him unload the feelings and beliefs that got back there. But you would be doing it, wouldn't be me, the therapist. Mm. So that rather than attaching, rather than that boy attaching to me, he's attaching to you. And that's what I mean by attachment theory taken inside. You become that primary uh, attachment figure. And maybe I, as your therapist, if I was your therapist, would be the secondary attachment figure or your your spouse or uh, something like that. And so attachment theory has that reversed in the sense that uh, attachment-based therapies have the therapist become the good attachment figure. And you would have those corrective experiences that I agree can be quite healing, but you leave thinking, wow, what a great therapist, rather than when, when clients leave me, they say, you're a pretty good therapist, but I healed myself. And it's true. The, the, as soon as you become aware of this, you, you, it, it becomes very easy to pick up when you are sort of blended and when you are in self, you know, and there's a massive distinction in just how you, everything about your experience, you know, if I'm blended, I'm usually running around the place at a hundred miles an hour, like making loads of mistakes, like just doing stuff that is probably destructive in the long term. Whereas when, when I'm in self, things just feel right. Things happen just naturally and organically. And I just feel like I'm where I need to be and I'm doing the right thing. So it's a very, very important distinction, I think. Yeah. I mean, the challenge is that there are parts of you that you're very used to blending with and, and believe that they, that you need them to protect you. And, so I had a argument with my wife this morning and the, <laughs> the part that she commonly triggers just totally took over. And when it takes over, she shifts from being very attractive to me to being not so attractive. I mean, it literally changes my, my view of her. And it's, it starts to ruminate about all the things she's done that I don't like. And I just can feel all of that. And then I react to her from that place, which of course only triggers her protectors more too. And then I'll, and we're, we've gotten very good at catching ourselves when we're, when it's protector wars and one of us saying, okay, time out, let's get a little space and I'll go and I'll get that protector to pull its energy out. And I'll say, okay, look, I know you've got this attitude about her, but you know, she's, she's suffering right now with things she's worried about. And yeah, her protector took over, but you don't have to squash it. Just let me handle this. And by now that part trusts me enough to, to let me do it. And so I can come back and apologize for letting that part take over and she can and we have more of a self to self connection and conversation. So that's a lot of what we're shooting for. It's not like when you've healed your parts, you never have an argument, but it's more like when you do, you catch yourself and you get a little separation and you come back. Very interesting. It seems that just from the outside point of view here that 
as you get better at leading yourself and leading, leading these different parts of yourself, it must be a lot easier to lead others as well in your organization and everything else. Have you found that to be, to be true? Yeah. You know, I, uh, now I've got a sizable organization and I'm not an organized person. I'm not a good administrator or any of that. I'm more the visionary. And so I've had to work with the parts of me that resent having to do administrivia and and be a leader at that level. And so because of those parts, there were times where, uh, you know, I can be fully in self with a client, despite whatever triggers the client presents. Now I can do that with groups that I'm leading or workshops. But with uh, my company, I hadn't made that connection that I have to do the same, be the same kind of leader with that with the company that I am in these other contexts. And luckily, we have a, a great consultant named Robert Gass who pointed that out to me. And so the parts, the kind of pouty parts of me that didn't ha want to have to do all this stuff and would whine when people disagreed with me, I used to let take over and and then. And more, much more, in, in recently now, I do the same thing I do when they get triggered in these other contexts. So, I'll, okay, just let me handle this. Let me stay. And so I'm a much better leader in my company now, too. Thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoyed the show. If you'd like to hear the full version, you can do so with the Weekend University Premium Membership. This gets you access to our master library of over 230 talks and interviews with the world's leading psychologists, professors, and authors, as well as transcripts, CPD certification, quizzes, and unlimited access to the recordings from our annual conferences. For more information, please go to theweekenduniversity.com forward slash membership.